Okay, my name is Jo Melson, I'm from the Directorate of Occupational Therapy in the Faculty of Health and in true occupational therapy style, I'm not going to tell you what the concept is until I've done a little bit of an activity because we believe in using activity and meaningful and purposeful activity to engage people. Um, also in true OT style I have got a focus on T because a lot of the time occupational therapists will spend time assessing people doing normal everyday activities, one of which being how to make a cup of tea. Okay, so I'd like you all to take one of these tea bags, which we have an English breakfast tea and a lemon and ginger uplifting tea. So we can grab one of those each and just have a, a compare of both of those, have a sniff what your preconceived ideas might be of how that might taste. It's a bit difficult just from a dry tea bag. Okay. What I would do in a classroom situation, oh you're allergic there, you see that that's important. <laughs> that's important. That's important. Um, is I would have an English standard tea, PG tip sauce thing, but we were restricted obviously with money, and a variety of different other teas, the herbal teas that people use. Um, I would ask students to consider each of those, compare, and think which one of those tea bags might be more suitable to more of the group, and which one of them might be more of a, a specialist sort of taste, or might there be any reason why you might not like that one, might you have an allergy, might you, you know, might it upset you, might whatever. What I am thinking about there is, back to the concept, is I would do this activity before introducing the concept, which is in occupational therapy, as in a lot of the healthcare professions, we use different models to actually ensure that we are assessing people correctly and making sure that we're using a holistic assessment, that we are looking at their physical well-being, their mental health well-being, and their psychosocial and their spirituality, etc. And what we use are, we use generic models, which you can use with all people, whether somebody has a mental health problem, whether somebody has a physical disability, you can use a generic model that will point the occupational therapist to make sure that they assess every single area. So, when we are distinguishing them between a generic model, which we might be able to equate to the most commonly acceptable tea that might suit most of you, not make you sneeze, like the lemon and ginger did. The lemon and ginger are the alternative ones, the one that may not suit everybody, would be the intervention models, which you might have a specific intervention model to deal with somebody that has had a stroke, for example, or you might have a different intervention model, like a psychoanalytic model that you might use with someone with a mental health problem. And if you mix those models up, and use them with the wrong people, then you might get an allergic sneeze reaction, you might, act, might actually be inappropriate and you could cause somebody some damage. When I first came, I was thinking of an umbrella to sort of represent a generic model. But when we got onto tea, we thought tea, we thought chocolate, uh, something that suits everybody. And the analogy of OTs and cups of tea sprang to mind. We worked really well. Um, Sean came up with the idea of chocolate, and then we thought tea, and then I thought, ah, yes, tea, OT, we're always using tea, so that worked quite well. Mina, like a plan for me? Yeah. Uh, my name's Sean Edrington. I work in the University of Salford and I'm teaching people about learning and teaching second languages. So, uh, my concept is, well, is to do with how people learn second languages. And one of the things about how people learn second languages, one of the theories, is to do with interaction and what happens in an interaction. Uh, to help people move their languages sort of on during the interaction. So, um, the theory, the, the sort of concept is negotiation of meaning. The negotiation of meaning means when um, two people are trying to do something with language, where that language breaks down, where there's a communication breakdown, uh, so if you imagine you're trying to do something in a second language uh, and there's a communication breakdown, by working to mend that communication rent and this is where the negotiation happens. Through that negotiation and then using successful pieces of language, um, the learners will then produce something which will then they think, okay, that worked, so I know I need to change the piece of language that I've previously used to do that function uh, into a piece of more successful communication. And over time that builds on their language um, skills and they get better at using it. 
so we thought about different things that broke down, things breaking down and things being mended. Um, and so we thought about things for mending things. We had a range of different things for mending things. And uh, we thought about quilting, we thought about wounds, and many things. But in the end, we came to the idea of a jigsaw. And jigsaws are very often used in language learning tasks because they're a good way of uh, getting people to collaborate on tasks. So we got um, a jigsaw, that's the jigsaw pieces and that's the jigsaw picture that we found. And I think I would be asking students to try and put this together um, to make a complete picture and using different kinds of sticking, the glues and sticking plasters and we've also, I've also got, you know, I could use other things, staplers, we didn't like one to buy everything and make a picture so that they would get some sense of the process or something that they need to put together together in a group. Um, some, some ways of making it better with these things sticking it together. And that there's a range of different ways to do it. When people look at negotiation of meaning, there are different ways that um, interlocutors can signal what's where there's a breakdown. For example, they can say, oh, I didn't understand what you said. Or they can say, A, what are you going on about? Or they can say, did you mean that word or did you mean this word? Did you mean plural S or not plural S? Uh, so we've got a range of different sticking, sticking things to do that. So that's sort of to get them to think about that breaking down, mending up, but, you know, building up and having something, having something whole and better at the end. We also thought that the different methods might represent different learning styles that the students might have in order to solve the problem to fix it.